This video is part two of our series on Donald Hoffman's Fitness Beats Truth Theorem. If you're not already familiar with this theory, check out part one linked above or below. Next, we'll cover 10 common objections to his theory. Chapters are broken out below if you wish to hop around. Number one, Hoffman's evolutionary game simulations are too basic to reflect the real world. By necessity, Hoffman's game theory examples simplify interactions of biological organisms and their environments. You may assume that the more complex the game gets, the better it is for the truth strategy. But actually, Hoffman proves the exact opposite is the case. Recall the global fitness function mentioned earlier, FWOSA. We kept things straightforward with just a handful of territories, one type of organism, one state of thirstiness, and just two available actions, selecting territory A or B. Now, in the real world, all of these values are massive. There's approximately 8.7 million species on Earth, totaling a far greater number of individual organisms, each with their own set of states trying to maintain homeostasis, and each taking actions which then have influences on the world, creating an unfathomable web of interactions. Oh, and this has been compounding for about three and a half billion years. Try and imagine how enormous the size of the perceptual space would be in this complex real world. In Hoffman's model, it turns out that after just 30 perceptual states, the fitness-only strategy wins at least 93% of the time, and truth goes extinct. Chaitan Prakash formally proved this mathematically. Over all possible fitness functions and a priori measures, the probability that the fitness-only strategy strictly dominates the truth strategy is at least cardinal x minus 3 over cardinal x minus 1, where cardinal of x is the size of the perceptual space. As the size increases, the probability becomes arbitrarily close to 1. In the limit, the fitness-only will generically strictly dominate truth. Consider that just our five basic senses send 11 million bits of information every second to the brain for processing. As Hoffman puts it, truth never even gets a chance to get on the stage. Number two, Hoffman's game seems rigged against truth. Honestly, I had this same critique when I began digging into the game theory strategies. But as I learned more about perceptual science, their model seems to be both as fair and straightforward as possible for testing their hypothesis. There is an objective world with many territories of various resources. Each territory maps to a fitness value, and each territory maps to a perceptual sensory state. Truth models the veridical world as best it can, then considers fitness possibilities. Fitness only takes a blind shortcut and models only for fitness. That's about as basic as they could design it, to put both strategies on an even playing field. The vast majority of people think they see the world as it actually is, and then take actions in response. Hoffman believes our perceptions evolve to guide adaptive behaviors. We literally see what is useful instead. Returning to the color analogy, you see a red apple. You probably think the color red is an accurate reflection of what is actually there. Though it is literally wavelengths of photons hitting your retina, and your brain manufactures the color red. FBT surmises that your mind doesn't do some kind of truth mapping from wavelength to checking its authenticity to then taking action. Through a fitness lens, you realize you're reconstructing red because that's fitter than the next best option. It's a satisficing perception. You perceive it as red because it's most fit to perceive it as red. Whenever a dominant strategy emerges, one could always say a game is rigged in its favor. It's a bit like arguing basketball is rigged against short people. Quickly, before the next objection, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to my channel. I guarantee it will maximize your fitness. Number three, isn't the fitness only strategy still seeing at least some of the truth? This was the biggest hang up for me, but no, in general, fitness and truth are not correlated. This fitness beats truth theorem might remind you of Plato's allegory of the cave. Prisoners in a cave are chained to a wall with a fire behind them, and can only see shadows cast on a blank wall in front of them. In Plato's cave, the shadows are what mathematicians would call a homomorphism, because they function as a map preserving some of the real-world structure. If an object passes in front of this fire, 
the prisoners would see the object's respective shadow on the wall. Fitness, however, is almost never homomorphic. If you are mathematically inclined, you can dig into the paper where Hoffman details the four structures used in the model, linked in the description below. Succinctly, they prove that as the number of world states and payoff values climb toward infinity, the probability that a payoff function is a homomorphism goes to zero. Quoting, Here we study four structures, total orders, permutation groups, cyclic groups, and measurable spaces. We ask whether the payoff functions that drive evolution by natural selections are homomorphisms of these structures. We prove, in each case, that generically the answer is no. As the number of world states and payoff values go to infinity, the probability that a payoff function is a homomorphism goes to zero. We conclude that natural selection almost surely shapes perceptions of these structures to be non-veridical. Recall that fitness values are dynamic, unfolding based on context. Another example from Hoffman. Consider the fitness payoffs offered by eucalyptus leaves. For a hungry koala wanting to eat, they offer nutrition. For a sated koala wishing to mate, they offer nothing. For a hungry person wanting to eat, they offer death by cyanide. For a sated person wishing to mate, they offer nothing. The same leaves offer wildly different payoffs, depending on the organism, koala versus person, its state, hungry versus stated, and the action, eating versus mating. As the number of perceptions grows very large, objective reality gets lost in the process. So consider that ground level truth cannot be perceived because of fitness dynamics as the perceptual space gets massive. Number four, there are only four structures tested in Hoffman's model. What about other structures? This objection is directly addressed by Hoffman and he agrees that further studies are needed. These are the four covered structures and the justification for inclusion of each. And quoting Hoffman directly, the structures we consider here are those of total orders, permutation groups, cyclic groups, and measurable spaces. These structures are critical for perceiving magnitudes, e.g. loudness, hardness, or heat, rearrangements of objects, rotations and translations of objects, and probability distributions, respectively. Cyclic groups are, in particular, crucial for the veridical perception of geometric space. There are, of course, many other structures relevant to perception, such as topologies, metrics, and partial orders. These structures also need to be studied to see whether they are preserved by payoff functions. Ideally, one can hope for a general theorem, perhaps using category theory, that specifies all structures that are not preserved, and thus not veridically perceived. In summation, they chose the best testable structures, though other structures require testing. Number five, is it possible a mixed strategy, perhaps seeing half the truth or seeing some non-zero percentage of the truth would be better? Does it have to be all or nothing? This'll be the quickest one. Mixed truth slash fitness models were tested in hundreds of thousands of worlds and fitness only strategies dominated them. As Hoffman puts it, in evolution, if you play any other game than going for fitness points, you die. So it is all or nothing, all fitness only. Number six, why don't the organisms map sensory states one-to-one -one with the world? Why is there dispersion in the model? Perceptual states with some dispersion are closer to what we observe in biological systems. In part one, we covered optical illusions, where our visual perceptions deceive us. Take another crude example. How long is the duration of this tone in milliseconds? If you guessed 1125 milliseconds, you're correct. But our auditory system isn't capable of this level of specificity. There's almost always some dispersion. Oh, and Hoffman's following paper, Interface Theory of Perception, which builds on his fitness speech truth theorem, covers both dispersive and dispersion-free strategies the same pattern of results applies. Number seven, more of a question. Does this model favor fitness because there's some additional cost to truth for accurately modeling the world? The short answer is no. In the FBT theorem, there is no additional cost to truth. In Hoffman's earlier work from 2010, he does estimate the additional energy required for the extra calculations needed for the truth strategy. 
he breaks it down by considering cost per bit of information. For every bit of information gleaned by perception, there are typically costs in time and energy. To be clear though, his most current FBT model, the one covered in this video series, does not incorporate any extra energy expenditure for the truth model. This is not about efficiently conserving computational resources for keeping track of the truth. The truth is just irrelevant. If you were to factor all this into the model, I think it would only make the theory even stronger. Number eight, are there any exceptions where the truth strategy beats fitness only? So truth and fitness only can tie when the resources are perfectly correlated to fitness. The only condition where truth has a chance to survive is if the fitness function is monotonic. If there are any non-monotonic functions, truth goes extinct. It's important to note that this probably never occurs in our world. As we've already covered, most fitness functions are non-monotonic. There's a Goldilocks zone of optimality. Resources are likely never perfectly one-to-one -one correlated with fitness. Number nine, this is a classical model. What about quantum considerations? This is an interesting one, and for the most hardcore viewers out there, Hoffman has a related video on quantum game theory, linked above and below. Quoting Hoffman, Our simulations use classical computations and classical perceptual strategies, but biological systems can apparently use quantum computations, e.g. in photosynthesis, and evolution might exploit quantum computation to sift through quantum and classical strategies. Our simulations have involved truth and simple strategies in many of the competitions, but the real interest for future simulations is in competitions between critical realist and interface strategies. For the time being, Fitness Beats Truth hasn't been tested with quantum game theory. It's classical only. And finally, number 10, if we don't perceive reality as it actually is, then how can this model possibly be true? Isn't it trapped in its own circular reductio logic? It's accurate to say our perceptions are stuck with this qualia of multi-sensory, moment-to-moment existence. It's akin to how we can't truly understand fourth or higher dimensional shapes, because we evolved in three dimensions of space plus one dimension of time. But there is a chance that certain domains, such as formal logic, are beyond the reaches of evolution. Mathematics, logic, and computation may reveal deeper truths beyond our fallible perceptions. Hoffman's interface theory of perception model addresses this concern, and we'll cover it in a future video. In the meantime, stay tuned for part three of this video series, where we'll cover the implications of Hoffman's fitness speech truth theorem. Oh, and thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. <laughs>